Good morning. My name is Mr. Zonday. Welcome to our chapel today. Let's start our chapel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Surprise! How many of you guys like surprises? Mom and Dad buy you a car for your 16th birthday. Surprise! You get a, all that sudden, you get a job promotion you weren't expecting. Your boss comes to you and tells you you're doing a great job. We love you. We want to keep you around. Surprise! That cell phone that you had that's been broken and cracked, mom and dad bought you a new one to replace it. You get that feeling, that excitement that builds up, that sudden you know, rush of emotions with that surprise. On the same side of that, though, there are surprises that we don't like. Surprise! Your company's downsizing. You've lost your job. Surprise! Your boyfriend or girlfriend just sent you a text saying that they don't want to date you anymore. Surprise! That donut that's been sitting on your desk the last hour that you've been looking forward to eating um, and all the high school kids have been eyeing um, is actually not a jelly donut, but it's a cream donut. <sighs> Surprise! They as well have, all those things have a certain feeling in your stomach, that gut-wrenching, hurting feeling. Surprise. Some of us like it, some of us don't. Good surprises, bad surprises. In our selection today uh, for our verse, we're looking at Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. So the Sermon on the Mount is kind of where Jesus is kind of starting his whole ministry. It's very early on the, in the book of Matthew. Jesus is standing on a mountain. There's a bunch of people below him. People are coming from a long distance away, coming and wondering what this person is going to say. They don't know he's a son of God. They may know that he's a son of God. They're looking forward to that surprise. What is he going to say? How is he going to say it? What is he going to tell us? What new things are we going to learn? Surprise. So Jesus is standing on the mountain, talking about a variety of things, preaching. We pick up at Matthew 5, 17 to 20. talks about fulfilling the law. Do not think I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law, until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Surprise! He is not here to reinvent the wheel, as some people thought he was. Instead, he is to fulfill the promises that were there in the Old Testament. Most of you know that the Old Testament was the book that the Hebrews believed in. So they used the first five books of the Old Testament. That was their Bible. That's where they kind of looked for for guidance. And Jesus said, surprise, I'm here to fulfill those. So Jesus in his sermon, at the same time he was talking about being the fulfillment, he also wanted to make sure he emphasized that the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees are sinners, as well as each and every single one of those people sitting on the mount. Jesus wanted to make sure that he did not differentiate between the Pharisees, Sadducees. Everybody is kind of lumped into that same pile. We're all sinners. We all sin. One sin is enough to send us to hell. In the last verse, in verse 20, it says, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. He's basically saying that you've got to be better than the Pharisees. But we all know the Pharisees are just like you and I. Surprise! They deserve the same punishment that we deserve, the same death that we deserve. However, surprise! We know that because Jesus lived, died, and allowed himself to be sent to hell, that our sins are forgiven. He wanted to make sure people were, were aware of this. He wanted to make sure people knew he was that fulfillment. Every time I sit in the pews, 
at church, the gym bleachers, or my classroom, listening to a sermon, listening to our Bible study, I always try to grab a piece of what the person is saying. And I always try to apply that to my life in one way or another, to take that away, to provide a takeaway for the day. Today's takeaway that I want to make sure you guys all have and you guys carry forward with you today is that, surprise, you do nothing. All the work has been fulfilled. Everything has been done. Jesus does not want you to be surprised at the end. He wants you to know and have confidence that the things that he tells you, the things that are written down, the things that the prophecies that are there have all been fulfilled. Surprise, you're all going to heaven. Amen. Let's finish our chapel today by bowing our head and saying a prayer. Dear Lord, please help guide, protect, support, and uphold us. Please help us to focus on you, to focus on your word. Please help us not to be surprised. Please help us on a daily basis to look to you, to look to your word, to guide and protect us. Amen. Amen.